Hey everyone, it's Fred Valles. We're here with AJ Wilcox at AdWorld Experience in beautiful Bologna. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. <laughs> How's the food here? Uh, it's been actually pretty good. I heard you had an amazing pizza yesterday, something... It, it was a pasta. Apparently the bolognese sauce is, is uh, from here is, uh, this is where it's from. And we had a tortellini and a taglietti. Nice. Might, I might have gotten that one wrong. Anyway, beautiful, it was beautiful good. food. So uh, what brings you to Italy? What are you going to talk about at that world experience? So I'm talking today specifically on a, uh, it's a, an advanced LinkedIn ads workshop. And we're going to be talking about basically the very beginning, who LinkedIn ads is good for, how you should approach it in a way that's going to be cost effective because it is an expensive platform, how to do targeting. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to get a lot more advanced as well, uh, different ways that we can use targeting to do things like excluding audience that we don't want to see our ads as well as uh, including just specifically the ones we do. Okay. So should be a fun conference. So at Optimizer, we mostly deal with AdWords and Bing Ads advertisers. So like, what's the, the biggest mistake that you would see someone making who's sort of brand new to LinkedIn? Uh, I think the biggest mistake I see are people who bid too high. So LinkedIn will tell you specifically when you create a new campaign that uh, here is the minimum that you can bid, here's the floor, and then here's the range where most advertisers are advertising. Um, that range is not true. <laughs> uh, LinkedIn will tell you a range that is ridiculous that people are not advertising yeah. or not bidding in. So I would say uh, when in doubt, bid low. Bid low. And then over time, I guess, so how much time should you spend on the LinkedIn campaign before you get really good data and you can start to optimize? Not necessarily a, an amount of time, but I like to see enough data. So I want to see between three and five thousand dollars, yeah, three and five thousand dollars on average uh, spent uh, between two offers. Mm -hmm. and usually what that's going to tell me is I'm going to have statistical significance between both of those offers so I can tell you what a CPL, uh, what CPCs and conversion rates look like based off of those two offers and you can decide how to go next month. Uh, and what would the typical offer be? The best kind of offers on LinkedIn ads are going to be things like uh, it's something gated, so uh, white paper, an mm -hmm. ebook, a checklist, a cheat sheet, a uh, free webinar, those tend to work great. Yeah, so this is mostly for a B2B, okay. Yeah, it's got to be usually large deal size B2B. So something where once you close a deal, that customer is going to be worth $15,000 right. or more to you over the lifetime of the deal. Really long conversion cycle, I bet. And yeah. So you get them early with an offer like a white paper, start building that relationship, and then over time, uh, lock them down. Yep, that's exactly right. Nice. And then plus you're getting exactly the right people into your, uh, into your funnel. So your sales team is going to love you because they're talking to the right people. Mm -hmm. And then of course it makes your retargeting audiences on Google and Bing look incredible because you fed them exactly the right people. Right. So the retargeting audience, you basically advertise on LinkedIn, they come to your site, you drop a cookie and then you reuse that same marketing list on AdWords and Bing? That's right. Okay. Yeah. And that's a big deal, right? Because in AdWords, uh, a lot of frustration is oftentimes that as a B2B advertiser, you can't really target because people search fairly generically. So yeah. this enables you to know that it's actually a target customer. Yeah, I think the, the biggest difference, I think, between search and social advertising is that with search, you get access to who is looking right now to, to find a solution but no control over who the audience is. Mm -hmm. And then social is <clears throat> precise control over who the audience is, but no control over what they're looking for. Right. So if you can get from social the best advertisers, or sorry, the, the best prospects into your funnel, and then rely on like RLSA audiences yeah, nice. to catch them when they're ready, it's a brilliant combination. And now you've been doing this for a long time, right? So what are you seeing is a, a new trend in 2018, or, or is it pretty much like, status quo or what's what's big and new Ooh, uh, this is gonna sound a little bit old um <clears throat> excuse me it's gonna sound a little bit old but i i uh i think video is gonna be a, a really big deal moving forward um video. hey this video might actually end up on linkedin Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well that's the thing is linkedin just in the last six months gave us native video that we can yeah. upload it to our profiles and then two weeks ago as of this recording they gave us access to post videos from a company page as well as uh, from from an advertiser, uh -huh. so you can advertise now doing video. Uh, I'm not super excited about LinkedIn video ads because they're pretty expensive. Uh, but what I will share is that um, YouTube ads and uh, and Facebook video and Twitter mm -hmm. uh, video ads uh, are all very inexpensive still. And the reason why I mean they've been very uh, very powerful for I think the last couple of years. The reason why they're still powerful is because there is that little bit of a, a hump that you have to get over. It's a technology hurdle of someone, when you get video, you have right. to do some level of production to right. it. And 
So because it's of that, easy, but it is cheap, and we see that at Optimizer too from very cheap uh, videos on Facebook, and it just builds an audience that we can later remarket to. Yeah. yeah, and then because other advertisers can't put together that level of production, uh, there's not enough demand for it, and so it keeps prices what yeah. I would call artificially low. Right. So yeah, take advantage of video. Yeah, exactly. Now that you still can. Uh, any type of videos that you see work uh, really well in B two B. Um, uh, that one's difficult, I, I think, because I, I haven't, I haven't gotten a chance to play with LinkedIn's very much, just because yeah. it, it, it barely came out. Um, but what I notice is that video is really powerful for getting to know someone very quickly. Yeah. So if you're sending someone to content and you're hoping to build a relationship with them, you realize that just the written word doesn't make that same connection. But you can watch 60 seconds of a video and get the factors that really matter, the no like, and trust factors mm -hmm. um, with someone. And then maybe during this video, uh, you know, we've built a relationship where you feel like, hey, I, I know, like, and trust AJ now. I would be more interested in looking at his services right. in a 60 second video that it would have taken three or four white papers or you know, a whole webinar to do. Right, and ultimately you're priming them too, right? Because now when they have a meeting with you and actually considering working with you, they've seen your face, and I guess that's where you're talking about the like and the yeah. trust factor. Yeah. Uh, th th there's nothing particularly to like and trust, except yeah. they, they've seen your face, and that makes a huge difference. Right? Yeah, and I'm a smiley dude. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you can trust someone And they should trust you and like you. I, I hope so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, hey, well, thanks for uh, chatting with me. Have a good show. and.